This is the third video on chronic hepatitis B and we'll discuss indications for treatment. This slide shows the common blood tests that are done in this condition. HBS-AG is the hepatitis B S antigen, which is found in the outer protein coat of the virus. Anti-HBS is the antibody that is produced by the body against the HBS antigen. HBE antigen is found in the inner layer of the virus. Anti-HBE is the antibody that's produced by the body to the HBE antigen. HBV DNA is a blood test that detects the genetic material found in the center of the virus and also the number of virus in a given volume of blood. ALT or alanine transaminase is a liver enzyme. This picture shows the different kinds of imaging or scans that are done generally in liver disease, including chronic hepatitis B. The commonest scan that is done is an ultrasound of the abdomen, which uses sound waves to look for abnormalities in the liver, including excess fat and liver tumors. CT scan or computerized tomography scan and MRI scan or magnetic resonance imaging are used to detect liver tumors. There are several tests that can be done to look for scarring or fibrosis of the liver. It is important to know how much fibrosis is present in the liver as management depends on this. If there is a lot of scarring or fibrosis of the liver, the doctor is more likely to start treatment with medications. The two tests done are a scan which measures liver stiffness. These scans are like an ultrasound but use low frequency sound waves. This picture shows you such a scan. These tests are painless and are non-invasive. They measure liver stiffness. The greater the stiffness, the greater the fibrosis or scarring. One such scan is the fibro scan. Another test that can be done to look for scarring is a blood test which measures scarring by checking the blood for markers of fibrosis. One such test is the fibro test, a new non-invasive method of looking for liver scarring or fibrosis is called the MRE or the magnetic resonance elastography. It uses an MRI scan to look for fibrosis. Liver biopsy is the best method to look for inflammation and fibrosis of the liver. A small piece of liver tissue is removed from the liver using a needle. However, it is an invasive procedure and can occasionally result in bleeding into the liver. Non-invasive tests that I have mentioned above, like the scan, and blood tests have now largely replaced liver biopsy. Treatment reduces the amount of virus and in doing so decreases liver cell damage and helps to prevent the consequent scarring or fibrosis, liver cirrhosis and liver cancer. Treatment of chronic hepatitis B depends on what stage the patient is in. Not all patients require treatment. Treatment is only given for patients in phase 2 and phase 4 because it is at this stage that liver damage is taking place. It is only in these phases that antiviral medicines are effective. If left untreated, the liver damage can result in scarring or fibrosis of the liver and this goes on to hardening of the liver or cirrhosis. It is estimated 
that one in six chronic hepatitis B patients go on to develop cirrhosis, which can progress to liver failure and cancer of the liver. I have discussed in great detail on the different phases or stages of chronic hepatitis B in video 2. Let's now look at the criteria for treatment for patients in phase 2. Treatment is given if the viral load is more than 20,000 IU per ml. Viral load means the amount of hepatitis B virus in a certain quantity of blood. A high viral load means that hepatitis B virus has a high rate of multiplication. The additional factor is that the liver enzyme ALT must be more than twice the upper limit of normal. A normal level of ALT is less than 35 units per liter for males and less than 25 units per liter for females. This means that if the ALT level is more than 70 units per liter for male and more than 50 units per liter for female, then it is an indication for treatment provided that the viral load is more than 20,000 IU per ml. The second group of patients with phase 2 who are treated are those with a viral load of more than 20,000 and those who have the following criteria, namely there is significant liver fibrosis, they are above the age of 40 and there is a family history of liver cancer. The reason behind this is that such patients have a higher risk of liver cancer if the disease progresses. In the second group of patients, the liver enzyme, that is the ALT, could be less than twice the upper limit of normal. Let's now have a look at criteria for treatment for phase 4 patients. So the criteria for phase 4 is if the viral load is more than 2000 units per ml and liver enzyme ALT is more than twice the upper limit of normal. Another criteria would be if the viral load is more than 2000 IU per ml and there is significant liver fibrosis on the various tests that I mentioned earlier is above the age of 40 or has a family history of liver cancer, then treatment may be considered. In this instance, the liver enzyme levels could be normal. There's another group of patients who are considered for treatment. These are patients with severe scarring or cirrhosis of the liver. There are two types of cirrhosis. One is called compensated cirrhosis and the other decompensated cirrhosis. In compensated cirrhosis, the liver, although scarred, is still able to perform most of its basic functions. In decompensated cirrhosis, the liver is unable to carry out its functions and goes into liver failure. In the case of compensated cirrhosis, the doctor will start a medication if the DNA levels are more than 2000 IU per ml, whatever the ALT levels are. In the case of decompensated cirrhosis, all patients are treated with medication.